So today I'm going to tell you about something that's really, really close to my heart. It's a super simple trick that allows you to find your own solutions to pretty much any Rubik's Cube on the shelf. That sounds too good to be true, but it's actually true. It's really quite amazing. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the trick using the, the normal 3x3x3 three by three by three Rubik's Cube. My audience uh, is going to be this guy here, my 11-year-old, Carl. Say hello, Carl. Hi. Okay, hi. <laughs> He's there in the background. And what he can do is he can solve the first layer of the Rubik's Cube. And the main message of this whole video is going to be if you can solve the first layer of any of those cubes, you can solve them. You don't have to look up any sort of recipe. With the trick that I'm going to tell you about, you will be able to design your own solutions. Anyway, he can do the first layer. Uh, a lot of people can do the first layer. Probably millions have gotten to the stage where they've solved the first layer. Right? So first layer, again, you look at a Rubik's Cube, you, know, you basically see one of those things completely solved. Now, why is it so hard to get beyond that stage? Well, what's really, really difficult there is that as soon as you do something now, pretty much anything, you're going to cut into what you've just solved and you're going to destroy it. So that gets very frustrating very quickly. And so there's pretty much three different outcomes now for most people who got there. The first one is you give up. That probably happens in the majority of cases. Second one is you go to the internet and look up somebody else's recipe to go beyond that. And the third outcome is you actually persist and you know, and get somehow your own solution. So what I want to do today is to enable as many as possible among you who are watching this video to actually get into this third um, category where you find your own solutions with a Rubik's Cube. Okay, let's get going. Anything you do now, it's going to destroy things. So what we're looking for at this stage is some magic moves. And the magic moves, what they're going to do, especially really sequences of moves, what the magic moves are going to do is they're going to leave pretty much all the cube intact and only touch and manipulate small parts of it. So for example, one thing you might want to do is, you want to look for a magic move that just kind of flips that edge here. Okay, just flips that edge here. How hard is that? Hmm, it's very hard. I mean, you just think about it. There's just no way I'm going to do it, be able to do this. To find, to find a sequence of moves that just uh, flips like one edge, it's actually not too hard if you just have to worry about the first layer. So just flip that edge and leave the rest of the top layer unchanged. And in fact, if you know, if you're a master of the first layer, you can permute that first layer any way you want. You can actually do this. You might not be aware of this, but you can. Um, as long as you don't worry about the bottom. So let's just do that, right? So go home, do it, right? And I'll, I'll show you an example of how, how to do this. So what we can do is we can uh, maybe do something like this, turn things out of the way, so the sides come up again, and we turn this guy over, we do that, we do that, sides back, and, well, we've just found a move that just flips this edge here and leaves the rest of the top layer unchanged. Okay, everybody here? Yep. Carly, still understand it? Very good. All right, because <laughs> it's for you, Carly. It's for you, Carly. Um, you're supposed to understand this. All right. Okay, now let's just unleash the whole thing on a solved cube and see what happens. Okay, so our move, your move, uh, let's unleash it on a, on a solved cube, see what happens. Okay, well, it's getting messy. But basically, the top layer is fine, right? Top layer is fine, except for this one uh, flip itch. Of course, the bottom is messed up, okay? And now comes the really, really, really important question. How can we restore the cube really, really easily? Kali? You do it in reverse. Exactly. And we didn't even rehearse this. <laughs> okay, so we do it in reverse. Obviously, if we do the whole thing in reverse, it's going to solve the thing, right? So let's just do it in reverse. Here we go, doing it in reverse, and doesn't come as a surprise. The whole thing is, is, is back to, to normal. Okay, let's just put in the move again. Okay, put in the move again. Now, what does the reverse move actually do? Okay, so in the top layer, yeah, in the top layer, what does it do? Well, it leaves everything in peace except for this one edge which gets flipped. And what does it do to the bottom part? Carly, what does it do to the bottom part? 
Does it fix it? No. It fixes it, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what does it do to the bottom part, Carl? It fixes it. Exactly. It fixes the bottom part. Very good. Very good. You're getting there. It fixes the bottom part. Now, we're not going to run it in reverse straight away. Here comes the trick, and it's so simple, you, you won't believe it, really. <laughs> what we do is, we'll just give the top layer a twist. And now we're running it in reverse. And now we're going to try and predict what's going to happen, <laughs> and then we have it happen. Uh, so what's ha going to happen is, well, if you run things in reverse now, just that your move, well, it should just flip that edge piece on the top, and it should restore the bottom. Let's just see what happens. So run it in reverse, here we go. All right. Ooh, that already looks very, very promising. We can make it look even more promising if we undo that twist of the top. So let's just do that and turn it around. And now in total, we've come up with one of those magic moves. A magic move that only affects two edge pieces, flips those two edge pieces. Pretty amazing, right? So, so for example, uh, if if we've got a messed up cube like this, and our aim is to kind of just flip those two, two edges, we can just use this, this combined move now to, to achieve this. So we're doing your move, then we're doing the top twist, then you were doing your move in reverse, and then we're doing just the top in reverse, and then at the end, that whole thing would look exactly the same, except that these two guys are, are flipped. Good. Important thing is, the only thing that really requires your input here is to design this move that just affects the top layer. You don't really have to worry about everything else, okay? Okay, let me give you another example. So maybe you want to twist some corners in isolation, right? So maybe you want to twist that corner here. Now if you just worry about the, uh, the, the top layer and not about anything else, um, you know, it's pretty easy. Maybe something like this, right? Okay. So if you look at the top now, really only that corner has been twisted. If we unleash that move on to a solved cube, what do we get? This thing, obviously the bottom is, is messed up. Okay, now how do we turn this whole thing into a magic move? Well, we turn the top a little bit, and now we um, run things in reverse. And so what's happening here? Well, let's have a look. Um, only those two corners are affected. Okay? So those two corners get twisted, nothing else is affected. Again, you can design something like this very easily. Okay, and just one more example. I mean, so far we've just been kind of stepping on the spot, kind of twisting things, flipping things, but obviously you really want to also find some magic moves that move stuff around. Right? So let's just do that. Let's move some things around. Another close look at top layer. Well, if we, for example, move that, that edge piece here somewhere, well, it has to go somewhere, so whatever is there has to go somewhere else. And, well, the simplest thing we can really do is just kind of swap those two, two pieces. And again, if you just worry about the top layer, you can do this, design something that does exactly that. So here we go. It's just an example, right? So you probably come up with something totally different. It doesn't matter, right? Um, the main thing now is, You've recorded your move, right? Uh, you give the top a twist. So give the top a twist and you run it in reverse. Okay, and untwist the top. And let's just have a look around. Everything's fine, except like three, three pieces have been moved around. And I'll just show you exactly what happened here. Basically this guy here moved over there that guy here moved over there, and that guy here moved over there. So like that. Okay? So this particular magic move, what it does is, it cycles three edge pieces, okay? And leaves everything else uh, unchanged. And you can do the same sort of thing for, for corners, right? Some, you can design a, a magic move that moves corners. And so in total, what we've done now is we've designed four magic moves. One that flips edges, one that twists corners, one that moves edges and one that moves corners. And together, with a bit of uh, common sense, um, this is a complete recipe for solving the cube. Might not be completely obvious, but obviously, you know, if it's supposed to be your solution, well, now it's really the time to sit down and fill in the gaps. 
I'm going to do a kind of a footnotes video where I ex do some more explanation of all this stuff, but um, that's basically it. All right. Now, this guy is really happy. Ha Kali, are you happy? Yep. Very good. He's happy. Did you understand everything? Yeah. He's probably just pretending, but anyway. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to test you on this one later on, okay? So I, I claim that this kind of works for pretty much anything here on the shelf. And so to just give you an example, um, let's have a close look at this puzzle here. It's called a Megaminx. Um, very nice puzzle. This thing also has a top layer. Here it is. Um, and it, again, very, very easy to, to restore just this top layer. And it's also very, very easy to just design a move that flips one of the edges here if you don't worry about the bottom. And then you take this move, you know, give the top a twist, run your move in reverse and untwist the top. And the effect this has is exactly the same as what we've seen before with the Rubik's Cube. And just like with the Rubik's Cube, you can design a total of four magic moves. And with those four magic moves, you can solve this thing. Now these magic moves are examples of what's usually referred to as commutators. It's actually a mathematical term. So it's expressions of the form A, B, A inverse, or A reverse, B reverse. And uh, well, in our case, obviously the A corresponds to your move, uh, the B corresponds to twisting the top, then your move in reverse, and then top in reverse. But that A and B can actually stand for um, any sequence of moves. So say A is a sequence of moves and B is a sequence of moves. And if we then do A first, and then B, and then A reverse, and then B reverse, um, that tells us something about the two moves. What does it tell us? Well, order matters when it comes to Rubik's Cubes. So usually it matters whether you first do A and then B, or whether you first do B and A. Usually you get totally different outcomes. Unlike when you multiply numbers, so for example, if you've got uh, 2 times 3, well, that's the same as 3 times 2. Uh, with Rubik's Cube moves, it's different, right? So usually, so for example, if we take this Mega Minx here, and we twist the top here, and then we twist that side here, the outcome is very different from first twisting this one, and then twisting that one. Okay? So, what does this compound move tell us about A and B? Well, it tells us whether they commute or not. So take a solved cube, okay? So maybe solved cube like this guy here. And then we have a sequence of moves A. We've got a sequence of moves B. And now we do A, then we do B, then we do A in reverse, and then we do B in reverse. Unleash it on this thing here and see what happens. Well, if nothing happens, so if that cube here basically uh, stays unchanged by this, this compound uh, move, and what that means is that the two moves A and B commute. That it doesn't matter whether you first do A and then B, or first B and then A. And so in a way, a commutator is a measure for how close two moves are to commuting. So the less stuff gets shuffled around here um, as a result of A, B, A, A inverse, B inverse, the closer the two moves are to commuting. Very, very important in mathematics, for example, in group theory, but also in physics and quantum mechanics. But, you know, that really goes beyond this video. Uh, so uh, that's it for today. <laughs>